This state leads the nation per capita incarceration. This city leads our state. 52% of the African male population in this city is unemployed. And the reason being is the fact that they have had some contact with the criminal justice system. My name is Nari Sanderson, and I'm a native New Orleanian. I spent 27 years, 10 months, and 18 days in prison. Uh, I was charged with second degree murder for a crime that uh, proven that I didn't do. I came home, already had food, clothing, and shelter. Had a job waiting for me that had been waiting for me for over 10 years. And you know, I tell people my transition was completely flawless. But I understand what it's like to be coming home with nowhere to go. And so we're trying to eliminate that out here by yourself. No, we're here. We're that safety net. And we're just trying to raise the consciousness of people about what reentry is supposed to look like. And this is the end product. I remember when I got out, I was happy. I, was walk, I walked through the gates, man. I was had this fantasy of what the free world looked like, and what I, how I was gonna be welcomed into society. And then when I got out, and my lawyers were at the front gate waiting for me. And then on my way home, I was saying, man, where I'ma go? Where I'ma where I'ma go? I don't have nowhere to go. It was a shock to me that all those years that I stayed in prison, man, I, you know, I never thought about where I was gonna live when I got out. To tell you the truth, bro, I'm grateful. You know, I, you know, ain't no ifs, ands, but, and I know this place, you know, is, is needed. That's primarily because we have been successful in helping people acclimate and right. because we realize our, not our success, but the success of the program helps the other guys. That's not even position. here, right. That's not even that, here. That's not even here, that's, that's even no here. coming. Basically, everybody in my community is in prison. All the mothers like me, we get together now because all of our kids are in jail. All of our kids are doing like 30 to 25 years. We see each other the first day of school when our kids are four. Now at the age of 17 in New Orleans, we see each other again when it's time to go to the courthouse to go to prison. I'm a mother of two kids. One of my kids are incarcerated. One of my kids have 30 years. I have three grandkids and I'm a formerly incarcerated person. Sunday morning at one o'clock. I was released from this, from Erlings Parish Prison. I was released from here at one in the morning. I live in a Trey May area. Imagine me being a woman, how terrified I was walking from here at one o'clock in the morning, making it to Trey May area for like two something by myself. But right now there is no help with that. There isn't anything to like try to help you do anything. The program would like, as soon as you call us, we will be here for to get you as soon as you're, you're getting out of prison, yeah. I came home, I don't have a house, I don't have a, a job, I don't have anything. And most women, when they get out, they go back to the street and do the same thing because there isn't any help out here for them. As a black mother, I feel as if though the system was designed to fill me here. I don't want nobody else to be in the same situation that I was in, no. I just want to help out and lead other people. I'm willing to open up my home and try to turn it into a re-entry to help women in the same similar situation that I'm in. A house, a permanent job, you just can't. Because if, if a person leave without that, we know from experience that's hard. You know, cause I, you know, it's, it's hard for me, and I got a, a job. But I'm still fall short in paying my paying my bill. Well, see, this you know, is one of the real tragic things about the folks staying in prison a long time. and come out, we don't have really nothing right. built into social security and stuff like right. that. We at the age in our life where we're always playing catch up. I don't have nothing built in. I don't have no dental plan. I don't have no retirement plan. I don't have no four one k. And that's one of the real tragedies about us uh, being in prison for so long, long yeah. that we don't have those same 
security blankets uh, kind of like waiting for us if something happened. Just imagine a person coming out of jail who's been in jail 50 years. You know, just think, 50 years back, we're talking about 1965 when he went in. This world has changed tremendously. This person doesn't even know where they're at. This house is coming to fruition predicated on the fact that all of us always wanted to do something to help somebody else, to make their transition that much smoother. A reentry isn't just somebody passing through some space to acquire some soft skills and get relief from prison. You know, if he don't have housing, he don't have anything. People talk about jobs. Housing is more important than jobs. Because if I got a house, I can wake up in the morning and go look for a job. I can have a job and don't have nowhere to sleep. Then what? There's a lot of work uh, that we have done, I mean, and proud of and been successful. But there's a whole lot more work for us to do. I mean, a whole lot more work for us to do. So that's pretty much where we're at right now.